Hey everyone, and welcome to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. I'd like to apologize first just for the delay in videos that have been coming out. There's actually been about three months since I've uploaded anything. Uh, life has been a bit busy. I've had quite a few medical issues, unfortunately, and I've just moved house as well. So I've been spending the past couple of weeks setting up my new office. The last thing I need to do is get the damn sound treatment installed because it's got quite a big echo, but hopefully um, it won't be too bad for this video today. Um, the video I want to do today is basically just a small tutorial on how to stop uh, craft, um, particularly rockets, from becoming unstable. Um, these are a lot of issues that I would say more newer players um, experience, but it is something probably that other people can take away from it as well. So the first thing we sort of want to look at is probably the most common issue that new players encounter, which is the good old flippy rocket which is something that can be quite a pain in the neck for those of you who are very new to the game and sort of just inexperienced with rocketry in general. I mean it's perfectly normal to not know exactly what you're doing with this when you first start. I mean I was completely clueless when I got this game years ago. So we'll just launch the rocket and I'll demonstrate what I'm talking about here. So we're just going straight up and I buggered up my staging. Let's, uh, oh god, that's embarrassing. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Yes. So there we go. The staging is actually correct this time. Whoops. Um, so you start your launch as normal and then you start to sort of, you know, tilt over a bit. Start getting set up for your, uh, gravity burn and then this happens. Oh dear. Quite a pain, and it usually results in a uh, either a crash or just a revert to vehicle assembly if you can't be bothered to watch your little rocket go up in flames. Now, we used a small rocket uh, for this example, but this does scale up. This is something that can apply to any um, vertical launch craft like this, and it applies in some ways to aircraft as well, but we'll go into that in another vehicle. So, the main problem that causes the rocket to flip is the location of the center of mass versus your center of lift. So if you click the two little buttons down on the bottom left, so center of mass overlay and uh, aerodynamic overlay, it brings up two little spheres here. The blue one is your center of lift, the black and yellow one is your center of mass. The blue sphere should not be above the center of mass because it's basically indicating where the um, largest amount of drag is currently appearing. So what you need to do to bring that down is just basically just put some fins on it, like this, and just have it set up so that that center of lift is below your center of mass. And if you launch the rocket now, there should be no issues unless you really, really, really try and crash it. So um, let's give that a quick go. So let's launch, get a few hundred meters away from the pad, and we'll turn right over. And I've got my thumb right hard down on the key, and it just doesn't want to flip because those fins are keeping it nice and stable. So that is a really, really basic example of how you sort of fix this issue. And it can, and it will apply to larger craft as well, but sometimes there are other things that cause larger craft to flip as well, like where your center of thrust is versus your center of mass, but again, that's a topic for another time. Today we're looking at purely sort of just aerodynamic and wobbly rocket issues. Now the next thing I want to talk about is something known as uh, wobbly ship syndrome, and this is something that will definitely um, happen on your larger vessels. It doesn't really apply as much to smaller craft. It can sometimes, but not usually. So you've gotten a bit better at the game. You've decided to be a bit ambitious and build something big like this, a sort of Apollo-ish style rocket. This isn't a very good replica, I will admit, but I knocked this together in about two minutes, so forgive me. So you're ready to launch, you throttle up, you act activate your SAS, you launch, you wait a few seconds for it to clear the pad, and then you start to pitch over, and oh my god, what the hell is happening with the rocket? Yeah, see, this is wobbly ship syndrome. And, um, if you really want to, it can create some rather hilarious effects. See if we can sort of force it. There we go. See, it's basically now a spinning top. And um, it can get so bad that your ship will essentially just disintegrate. Now, this is obviously um, not the ideal outcome you want when you're building a rocket, especially in career mode where you're dumping hundreds of thousands of credits into a mission. And um, there is uh, two solutions for this. Um, 
but there is sort of one that works a lot better than the other. So solution number one is you can just like dump a bunch of these struts on it to sort of hold it steady, but that's very sort of not aesthetically pleasing. The other thing you can do is use something called auto strut. Um, now that is something you do need to activate using the menu, but I'll explain that in a moment, but I'll just explain how it works. So auto strut is basically a bunch of invisible struts that get applied. Um, you can route a part to your the heaviest part of the rocket, the root part, which is itself, and the grandparent part. Now if you're the root part, that doesn't really matter, so I usually just do that for the heaviest part. Go root part. And we just repeat this quite a few times. And I like to definitely put auto strut on sort of connecting areas, so things like fairings, um, stage separators. Um, you can do it on fuel tanks as well, but it's more so like more the flimsy connections, which is where your ship's gonna let go. So if you can just sort of manage those, usually you'll have no dramas. Oh, you missed a separator there. And let's do that. I apologize if my mouse noise is coming through a lot. I've got to adjust the microphone settings and everything as well. It's just getting this office acoustically set up properly is becoming a bit of a pain. So hopefully this won't be a long-term issue. So now that we've done the auto strut, if we launch, there shouldn't be an issue this time if we just wait until we're about 200 meters and then pitch over and look, see, very solid. No wobbling. Kerbals are happy. It doesn't look like the Kraken's going to come along and eat it up today. And yeah, that's it. Very simple, easy fix. Um, now, if you've just got the game or if you've not really twiddled with the menu options, you might not have um, auto strut available immediately. So, what you need to do is just quit back out to the main menu. Then you gotta to go to your settings. And you need to click on this, advanced tweakables. So you've gotta make sure the green light is on. Um, with that on, it allows you to activate the auto strut option when you're in the vehicle assembly building or the aircraft hangar. If you don't have advanced tweakables um, on, that won't appear. So very important. But yeah, that's basically a wrap up for this tutorial today. I hope it sort of helped solve a few small issues for any people that are quite new to the game. I'm going to work on some more advanced tutorials as well now that I'm finally set up in an office that works. Um, if there's anything you're particularly struggling with in Kerbal Space Program, drop a comment and let me know and I can work on a series of videos or a specifically tailored video for you. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.